Hi folks, Modelling Mark here again. I've got a new stick of the sticker board. My mini home workshop. This is Paul who lives out in Thailand. Very nice down to earth character. Um, seems to thoroughly enjoy his model engineering. And he's got a really interesting channel. He's currently building the Webster internal combustion engine. His last project was a copy of a Stuart 10H with his own castings, uh, which was a really interesting build, fun watching to see the trials and tribulations he went through doing his own castings. Anyway, good channel, well worth a visit. There's a link in the description. Right, on with the Stuart progress now. This time I'm going to tackle the crank web. This is a bit more straightforward than the frame was. The top and the bottom both need machining to size. The diameter needs turning. The boss needs turning if I can get a tool in there. The instructions say to drill and tap the hole for the crankshaft and the crank pin. But I'm not terribly keen on that. Threads never seem to be a particularly good way of holding something accurately. So I'm going to drill and ream the hole for the crank pin and lock tight that in. The crankshaft will be drilled and reamed and then I'll hold that with a set screw. Now let's talk about the setup and order of operations. Right, I think I'll put this in the vise this way down, this resting on a couple of parallels so it's held almost flat. Um, that is a nice flat face. This face is anything but flat, but there's a lot of meat to come off here. And so I'll take that down almost to size. Then when that's flat, I can turn it over, machine that off, true. Finally, turn it over again, machine that off to the exact dimension, then drill and ream those two holes. Then once the milling's done, I can go over to the lathe, put it on a spigot and turn the diameter and turn the boss. I'll just gently touch the tool down on the surface to zero the z-axis. That's the top taken down to just oversize. So now I'll flip it over and take the bottom down to size. Now the bottom's machined, I'll use that as my reference surface. Now I'm just using a shim to bring the tool down to height, so I can zero the height. Then I can machine the top down to its final dimension.
a quick check with the mic and that's near enough. Now I'm using a bit of bar in the drill chuck to get the chuck centred on the boss. Now I can drill and ream out the 3 16 hole for the crankshaft. Now I want the crank pin in the centre of the web, um, so, I've, so I've used the edge finder to edge find off the two sides. That kind of works okay, um, not brilliantly accurate because it's trying to find the edge of a rough casting, but it, it's close enough. Now I can set the position of the crank pin on the DRO and drill and ream the hole. Now the final hole looks a little bit close to the edge of the vise, so I'm just measuring it to see if the drill is going to go into the parallel or not. And yeah, I think it's a little bit too close for comfort. I'll just move the parallel out of the way and remember not to press too hard on the drill. Finally I'll go in with the 8th reamer. Over to the lathe now to turn the outside diameter in the bush. Now I've turned a mandrel in the three jaw chuck and threaded it so I can get the crank web running nice and true. Still a little bit to go yet.
Okay, I'll take that. Now I want to turn the boss of the crank down to match the boss of the main frame. The only way I could get a tool in to do this was to use the boring bar upside down again and the leg is running in reverse. That worked fine although we ended up turning down the nut as well. Not a great problem, it's now a sacrificial nut. Now we'll give it a quick polish with a Kratex block to take out the milling and the tool marks. The last machining operation is to drill and tap a 5BA hole for the grub screw to hold it onto the crankshaft. Now it's a simple process of using the edge finder and the DRO to locate the hole for the grub screw. Let's start with the taper tap. Then I finish off the threading with the plug tap. That's the machining finished on the crank web. Now I've just got to glue the crank pin in place. Now the crank web is mounted on the crank shaft and that's held in a collet block in the milling vise. That's all nice and vertical. The crank pin is held in the drill chuck. Again, that's nice and vertical. There's a little bit of plastic to stop the crank web being glued to the spacer so now we just lower the crank pin in place wipe away the excess and let it dry and that should result in a crank pin that's nice and parallel to the crankshaft and here's the completed crank web complete with the crank pin thanks for watching folks Next time I'll be tackling the cylinder. If you enjoyed the video please click the like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thanks again. See you next time.